All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is how our atmosphere and the surface of the Earth has changed over time. So we know that our atmosphere is compo composed of lots of different gases, mainly nitrogen and oxygen, but a little bit of argon and other glass gases, including carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, all that good stuff. So we don't care about all of these things for climate. We only care about a few of them. So what do we actually care about? What stuff in our atmosphere are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about what we call pollutants. And for climate, the pollutants are greenhouse gases, ozone depleting particles, and aerosols. Greenhouse gases is probably thing, the thing that you're most interested in or the most um, familiar with. But let's talk about that more. What are greenhouse gases? Well, those are those 0.1% of other gases. A lot of those are greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. They don't take up a large proportion of our atmosphere, but they do have a huge impact. So things like carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, greenhouse gases are things, are gases in our air that trap outgoing radiation, right? So the sun's radiation is able to penetrate through the atmosphere, come into the atmosphere, be absorbed into earth, but rather than being reflected back out, it's trapped underneath those greenhouse gases. And we'll talk more about the process of that later. Right, those are greenhouse gases, they warm the earth and they actually cause an increased radiative forcing. A radiative forcing is just the energy flux in the atmosphere caused by both natural and anthropogenic factors of climate change. And we measure it by watts per square meter. So you can think of the radiative forcing as just like how much radiation is hitting the surface of the earth. Um, you know that watts, uh, you might be most familiar with that unit, thinking of like light bulbs. Most of your light bulbs are that you have in your house are 60 watt light bulbs. So you can think of 60 watts per square meter of radiative forcing would be a single light bulb over every square meter of Earth, right? To put that in, into perspective. Um, Earth actually receives a constant or nearly a constant 340 watts per square meter. So that's like having... Um, you know, like five or six light bulbs per square meter of Earth, um, but it's co all coming from the sun. That's how much radiated, radiation from the sun is coming to Earth. Now, thinking about observations, it is certain that atmospheric burdens of well-mixed greenhouse gases in our atmosphere have increased. Um, and this title says from 2005 to 2011, um, but that is only because I got that sentence from uh, a previous report that was published in 2014, it, it's going all the way up until today. Um, so precise, accurate, systematic measurements of atmospheric carbon dioxide at Mauna Lao, which is in Hawaii, and at the South Pole um, were started by C.D. Keeling from Scripps Institution of Oceanography in the late 1950s. Um, and they chose those two spots because they were so far away from human or a lot of human development. Um, so it wasn't just getting you know, the wafts of um, CO2 from a nearby city, those are places that are so far away from human development, you're really looking at the overall well-mixed greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Um, today, measurements are collected from several networks globally, but those two sites were some of the earliest ones that we look at for a lot of our long-term records. And from those, right, we can see that, yes, it's absolutely certain that since 2005, the atmospheric abundances of these greenhouse gases has increased. Um, this has resulted in a 7.5 increase in radiative forcing between 2005 and 2011, with carbon dioxide contributing 80%. That's why we talk about carbon dioxide as the greenhouse gas the most, because it's contributing the most to the radiative forcing. So I want you to look at these two graphs. The first one is showing that carbon dioxide is increasing over time. Um, the red is showing the uh, or I guess I'll start with the blue. The blue is showing like day to day what's happening. But notice there's that seasonal cycle where you see the summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, back and forth. The red is just averaging out. So it's the average per year, a little smoother. All right. So looking at that bottom graph, which is showing the change in carbon dioxide per time, this is showing you acceleration or deceleration. If this slope of that bottom graph is up, that means that carbon dioxide increase is accelerating. If it's down, it means it's decelerating. And if it's flat, it means the increase is staying the same. So are we increasing more and more? <laughs> like, Are we accelerating our carbon dioxide, keeping our carbon dioxide constant, or are we decelerating how much carbon dioxide we're putting into our atmosphere? The answer is accelerating. So not only 
are every year we're putting in carbon dioxide into our atmosphere, every year we're putting in more than we did the previous year. Um, and that means that a lot of these uh, statistics I'm going to be giving you in this lecture are very, very quickly going to be out of date um, just because we're putting in more and more and more uh, greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. Um, this is the same grass, but for methane, which is another very potent greenhouse gas, um, even more potent than carbon dioxide, but there's less of it in our atmosphere right now, so it's not contributing to as much um, uh, much global warming. But as you can see on that top graph, we are still you know, increasing the amount of methane we're putting into our atmosphere every year. But that bottom graph is showing us that we're actually decelerating. So yes, this year we're putting in more than we did the previous year and more than the previous year and so on and so on. But the amount we're increasing every year is a little less than it was before. So we're decelerating the amount of methane we're putting into our atmosphere. So we are doing some things right, right? We're looking at these trends, we're being alarmed and we are changing our actions slightly.